Hello, good um, early evening. Um, I just wanted to address something because it's come up quite a quite often here in the last couple months, and that's um, those Christians that don't believe in the snatching way, um, and they think that that's a lie invented by Satan, or it's been added to the Bible and that no one will actually be caught up in the air to meet the Lord Jesus Christ, but everyone who's a believer will stay on earth and forge through and do God's work through the tribulation here on earth. And I also want to address a, a comment that was made um, to one of my videos as well, but first to address the rapture. And I understand the rapture is not in scripture, that word, it's a Latin word. So it's really not in scripture. I understand that. I just use it because people know what you're talking about when you say the rapture. I understand it's not scriptural. Um, the snatching away or being caught up is the scripture used in the Bible. Um, now for the Christians who say that there is no snatching away, it all goes back, and I can't spend the time on this video. You have to go back to my previous videos or look up information or read the scripture yourself to determine the differences between Paul's gospel to the uncircumcision or of the uncircumcision and Peter's gospel of the circumcision. So they're different messages. If you look at Galatians chapter 2 verse 7, Paul says, but on the contrary, perceiving that I have been entrusted with the evangel of the uncircumcision, according as Peter of the circumcision. So Peter has a specific message, and Paul has a specific message, and they are different messages. You have to understand that they're different messages. You have to read into that because you cannot understand scripture if you don't rightly divide the word by taking Paul's message and making it separate from Peter's message and yes Peter's message is the message that the physical Jesus Christ while he was on earth preached but Paul got a message from that same Jesus Christ but the glorified Christ on his way to Damascus when Saul of Tarsus was knocked on his horse off his horse and Jesus Christ gave, throughout his career, gave the Apostle Paul revelations of a new message. That's why you have a gospel of the circumcision and you have a gospel of the uncircumcision. Those are not people, even though Paul went primarily to the nations after the Jews rejected the message, and Peter stayed and Jesus Christ stayed with the Israelites or the Jewish people around them at the time. But the message itself is not specific to people. It's the message, the contents within the message, that is different. That is why Peter says in 2 Peter 3.16 that there are elements of Paul's gospel that are hard to understand. Peter couldn't understand some of the elements of Paul's message because Paul's message had nothing to do with law and it varied. It was different from Peter's message. How else would there be things in it that he didn't understand? It has to be different. It's logical. You just have to think about it for a second when you read it. But if you go back to Acts, let's go to Acts chapter 11, verse 1 through 3. And this proves that they're distinct, different messages. Acts 11, 1 through 3. Now the apostles and the brethren who are of Judea hear that the nations also receive the word of God. Now when Peter went up into Jerusalem, those of the circumcision doubted him, saying that you entered into men having uncircumcision. Having uncircumcision means that they are acting apart from the law. So it's not the group of people, it's what those people were doing, what those people believed that is different from the circumcision gospel. So it's a different message that Paul has from Peter. The circumcision has to do with the law and the Israelites 
that will rule the earth when Jesus returns. So those people that believe that message and Christians are in the wannabe believers of this message, they will stay on earth. And some Christians are circumcision believers. But their destiny is the earth. So they will follow law. Granted, it's law that God will cause them to follow. It's not of their own will, which I'm going to talk here in a second. But that circumcision gospel is for people on the earth. So they will go through the tribulation. You will sustain, you will overcome, or you'll die as a martyr. You will stay on the earth. There is no snatching away for the Israelite believers that will stay on this earth when Jesus returns at his second coming. There is no snatching away. So you don't have to worry about it. It has nothing to do with you. You will stay on the earth. You can overcome and do all that stuff. That is not the message to the uncircumcision believers. It's a different message that Paul has. Paul got a message leaving Jerusalem. It's something separate. We are saved apart from law. Our message has nothing to do with law. So the uncircumcision, Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3, if we go to Ephesians, this is a secret. Paul says that he got this information by revelation. He didn't get it from Peter and the other apostles. He didn't get it from the physical Jesus Christ that walked the earth. He got it from the glorified Christ through a revelation of the secret that is made known to him. And that secret has to do with members of the uncircumcision, those that accept Paul's message, being seated among the celestials. So our destiny, those that believe in Paul's message, those that have been called to believe Paul's message, will be seated amongst, amongst the celestials in the heavens. That's our destiny. That's where the uncircumcision is going. If you don't believe me, don't, don't believe me. Read chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3 of Ephesians. It says it right there, that this is a secret. It's a secret that is untraceable in the rest of scriptures. You can't find it because it's something new that Paul is giving by revelation from the risen Christ. So it's a different message. And that message includes the snatching away. Go back to Galatians chapter, chapter 1. This is Paul speaking. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, talking to the uncircumcision believers, who gives himself for our sins so that he might extricate us out of the present wicked eon. Extricate us out of the present wicked eon. We're still in that present wicked eon, Mr. Christian. Do you believe that? Or has that eon passed? Are we in a good eon? No, the eon Paul talked about is the eon we're still in today. And he says that we will be extricated out. That means pulled out. Just like the same word that was used in Acts 12.11 when Peter was taken out of jail. He was extricated out of jail. We're going to be extricated out of this present wicked eon. That's the complete opposite of enduring and staying on this earth through the tribulation and waiting for Jesus Christ's second coming. Two, why, it makes no sense to be snatched up in the air, as Thessalonians says, and then come right back down to earth. We get snatched in the air because we're going to heaven. That's our destiny, according to 1st, 2nd, 3rd uh, Ephesians. Paul is not part of the 12 tribes of Israel. His name is not written. He's not going to rule like the apostles are because they're on earth. His message is one of heaven. And yes, God is rec reconciling the earth through Israel and recon reconciling the heavens through the body of Christ. So they're different messages. So the Christian that doesn't believe in the snatching away they're right. It doesn't apply to them. They will be on this earth because they don't believe in the message that Paul gave. And they can't understand that there's a difference between the two. But if you study scripture, you'll find that difference. Believers 
of the circumcision gospel that love law and follow the earthly Jesus Christ they will stay on the earth and endure through tribulation the uncircumcision believers that are saved by grace through faith apart from any law will be snatched away extricated out of this present wicked eon according to Paul that's not Satan saying that that's not a mistranslation that's consistent with Paul's message and that's that's the end of that but now to the comment that was made to me um, after this person said that he said it is your faith and or she I'm not sure who it was I can't find the message now it's your faith and belief that saves you so if you lose that faith you will go to hell okay so many things wrong with that statement even for the circumcision believers if you follow the law and Jesus Christ chose you then it's not based on your own free will it's based on Jesus Christ causing you to stand if you're gonna stand through the tribulation you're gonna believe in Jesus Christ it's because he chose you he give you gives you the faith and he causes you to stand and hell uh, you know if you watch any of my other videos if you do any study at all you can realize that hell is not real it's a, a complete and utter lie you want to talk about Satan injecting things in the scripture free will and hell are two of the biggest ones but that hits on my next point that you believing that free will saves you you believing that it's your faith and belief that saves you just exposes the self your self salvation your salvation by your own strength and action because you say it's your faith and belief that saves you well if you look at Romans chapter 3 verse 21 it clearly states that it's the faith of Jesus Christ and him going into death and believing that the father would raise him from the grave and when the father did raise him for the grave that's where we get our righteousness whether it's the uncircumcision believers or it's the circumcision believers for the circumcision believers Jesus Christ fulfilled the law for them it's not that you fulfill the law Jesus Christ had faith he fulfilled the law and he gives that to you so it's not of your own accord it's not up to you but it hits on a, a really bad point for you mr. Christian because you think you're saved by what you did so Jesus Christ's death and tomb and resurrection actually did nothing it's only if you believe and you have the faith from some place within inside yourself that's independent from God and then you give it to God then you're saved so Jesus's death and tomb and resurrection actually did nothing it's based on your response to whether your sins are forgiven or not but that is not scriptural there's no message in the Bible that talks about that you are saved by what Jesus Christ did and if you believe then you only believe because God gave you that belief it's a measure of faith that he gives to each one of us and whatever you give to God came from God because all is of God you can't give anything to God that he hasn't first given to you that's scripture so if you believe it's your faith and belief that saves you and if you don't have that then you go to hell then you don't believe in the circumcision or the uncircumcision gospel because both gospels rely on the death and tomb and resurrection of Jesus Christ so you're saved by self based on what you do and that is the Antichrist spirit I think that every single person has is that they look inside themselves as an idol that they can attain salvation they can attain the righteousness that Jesus Christ already attained for you the Romans chapter 5 maybe where it says we look to establish our own righteousness and by doing that we're ignorant of the righteousness of God by saying it's your faith and belief you're looking to establish your own righteousness instead of accepting the righteousness that Jesus Christ has done and he will cause you to accept that and eventually everyone will have that righteousness because of Jesus Christ not because of your faith and belief but the faith and belief that Jesus Christ gave you 
But the self-will is a dangerous thing because you can see that manifested in the world today with you know, selfies, YouTube channels. I mean, sometimes YouTube channels can be used for good. Facebook. Um, every, you have people that worship themselves. They will tell or make videos on everything they do throughout the day or take selfies because it's so important because they're so self-absorbed. That's the society we live in, the Hollywood society of self-absorption. And what that leads to in this beast system is looking to humanity or self. So eventually you're going to look for an antichrist or something that's not Christ because that exalts self. You'll be subject to it. Everyone wants to deny the Antichrist saying, oh, I won't worship the Antichrist. But yet, the Antichrist spirit is self. And self leads to humanity and looking to humanity for some type of savior. But that can be negated and turned from, repented of, if you look to Jesus Christ as completing your salvation, not relying on yourself. And that's not what Christians do. They rely on themselves to add or complete the cross and nothing could be further in, from the truth it's Jesus Christ's death and tomb and resurrection and his righteousness is the only righteousness that can get to God